Let us pray. Loving God, may the meditations of all of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Collegiate family, this morning I am honored to be joined by my colleagues, the senior ministers of the Collegiate Church of New York. We have come together to commemorate that a year ago on March 13th, the first life succumbed to the COVID-19 pandemic in the city of New York, the city we love, the city we serve. A year later, over 518,000 lives have been lost in these United States and over 2.5 million worldwide. We closed the doors of our respective sanctuaries. When we did that, we could not foresee that we would be here today. We have all suffered loss during this time, individually and corporately, and while we are in the season of Lent, a time when we are called to reflect on our fragility of our life, we have lived a full year, not only reflecting, but, on, but also mourning in this fragility and holding place for our grief in the midst of our suffering. Thank you, Damaris. You know, I've been thinking about this past year, and it's been longer and more painful than we ever expected. And I think because of that, there's a part of us that wants to protect ourselves from any more pain. And one of the ways we can do that is move quickly past the staggering number of deaths that have occurred. And just think about this. It was on March 14th that we learned of the first death from COVID in the city of New York and the first death in the state of New York. And since then, there have now been over 500,000 deaths from COVID in this country. And furthermore, and this breaks my heart, in New York City alone, there are 500 bodies, people who have died from COVID, that are being stored awaiting a burial. And it's for all kinds of reasons, because of money and logistics, people struggle to get them home, to remember them and bury them. And a third of them are unclaimed. And I think because of the high numbers, it's easy for us to assume that this is inevitable and it just becomes another data point but we are a community of faith that are called to remember that this isn't about numbers, this is about names. People who were loved and people who shared love. People because of their deaths that have left a trail of brokenness. And as a community of faith, we are called to come together and hold one another in that brokenness, in that grief, in that mourning. And when we do, we know in the words of Psalms that God is near in our brokenness and saves us when we're crushed in spirit. And so let us hold on to one another in our grief and brokenness, knowing that God is near and God will restore our spirits. The John text in our service this morning references one of the Hebrew Bible's most incredible and dramatic healing stories, which remains in our consciousness even to this day in the logos of the American Medical Association, the U.S. Surgeon General, and the U.S. Army Medical Corps, this tangle of snakes on a pole. Moses made a bronze serpent and placed it on a pole, and God told the people to look up all who needed healing and live. In that case, even as today, we had to look directly at what was causing the pain, the grief, the suffering to find our pathway to healing and the vastness, the boldness, the incredible comprehensive nature of God's love offers to God's people unlimited healing. The very thing that was killing them in our biblical text is the thing that had to be looked at for them to live. And even today, as we reflect on one year of COVID-19, the global pandemic, and untold and unimagined suffering. It's the virus that has killed so many and caused so much pain that is yet now providing a pathway to healing through the vaccine. God offers us, even in our suffering and grief and in our pain, a pathway called unlimited love. God offers us healing. God calls us to look up. And we look at the very problems we must face even beyond COVID, with income inequality, with racial strife, with injustice, we must look directly at those problems and know that God is there with God's love, 
waiting for us for our healing. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? When will it come? Where will it come from? Will it come now? Today? I need it today. I need it from God, and I need it to take us out of here, to go from this place to the next with all due haste, to heal the sick, to be friends to the downhearted, to be advocates for justice, laborers for love and warriors for peace. There is a great light that is the resurrection promise made known in John, made known in the gospels, made known in each of you. May known in the eyes that twinkle above a mask at a stranger on a street. May known in the small acts of kindness we have learned to do this pandemic. May known in technology that frustrates and yet keeps us together. There is a great light. There is a great light that will lead us from here to there. I lift up my eyes to this light and to the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help is in the name of heaven and of the one who has created it and us and this time and who will lead us from this time to the next place as she always does as a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of smoke by day lead on great spirit your people are ready to follow blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted they will be comforted by the one who came all the way down to be with us as one of us, all the way down, human, vulnerable, marginalized, brown, Nazarene, Jewish from Palestine, at once homeless, at once a refugee, vulnerable, grieving like we do in human form. God came all the way down to light our way to tomorrow, to peace, to joy. I'm always inspired by this scripture and the one that says, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all humankind to me. As we who are earth made flesh, Adam made flesh, follow in the way of Jesus, on the way, on the way to the cross and on the way through death to new life, May we be comforted by the one who's gone before us, who knows what it's like to mourn, who knows what it's like to lose loved ones, who knows what it's like to rise again from the ashes of death, to be born anew. May it be so. Amen. And so as we remember those who have gone before us, they remain in God's heart, in God's presence. We may not know all of their names, but we have names that we can order today. We remember those who are buried in Heart Island without a stone that we could pass our fingers over their names, but they are in God's presence. Remember the immigrant, the refugee, the poor, those who no one might think to remember. And in this light that we are called to walk and to live, we use it to shine light in the injustice of the world, to shine light in the, in the lives of those that many will not see. And so this morning, we pray not only because we're mourning and we are in pain and we are broken, but because we are called to do this work. We are called to shine a light on those who others may not see. Let us pray. O oh God, creator of the universe, we stand before you as fragile humans made only of earthy clay in your breath. We name the sick and hold them in your healing light. O oh God, hear our prayer. In all humility, we turn to our God today to honor our dead. We have had no time no space, no moment to mourn. We claim in faith that we are born from God, we live for God, and we return to God. 
we seek rest and time in you. Hear our prayer. Give us the gift of weeping, O God, for tears of love are always holy. May our mourning, our lamenting, our remembering and learning not disappear like water and sand, but push us to weep from time to time. Keep us tenderhearted, Lord, we pray that you would hear our prayer. As a people, we have borne this pandemic's cost in the lives of our families. As a nation, we shall honor and mourn them together. Let peace and goodwill and good health prevail among all the nations. O oh God, and may it be so in our families, communities, and land on this day and each day to come. These families are your families, O oh God. Hear our prayer. God, open our eyes to a new and holy vision that your people may be your people in the days to come. Let your light shine through the night of our grief. Make us brave, O oh loving God, together. Hear our prayer. Amen. 